Hello and welcome to all to this lecture series on basic thermodynamics. This is lecture 2, zeroth law and thermometry. Okay, let us begin. See, what is zeroth law of thermodynamics? Zeroth law of thermodynamics says if a body A is in thermal equilibrium with body C and body B is also in thermal equilibrium with body C then A and B will also be in thermal equilibrium with each other. That means if the temperature of A and C are same and if temperature of B and C are same that means temperature of A and B will also be same that is given by zeroth law of thermodynamics. Okay, This is the very basic law. This is very basic law that defines the temperature in case of thermodynamics. Okay, So if A and C are in equilibrium, thermal equilibrium and if B and C are also in thermal equilibrium then A and B will also be in thermal equilibrium. That is given by zeroth law of thermodynamics. Okay, Then what is thermometry? The study of temperature and its measurement. The study of temperature and its measurement it's known as thermometry and a thermometric property is one which helps in finding the temperature okay we have uh, therm we have thermistor or resistance thermometer what is it it is based on the Wheatstone bridge principle here you can see this is a Wheatstone bridge okay p q r s r 4 resistances and the thermometric property here is resistance okay and for the balanced Wheatstone bridge this P by Q must be equal to R by S and in that case we will find this S is equal to 14 ohms and from there we can find out the temperature okay that is the thermistor or resistance thermometer okay the important for point for you to note here is that it is based on the Wheatstone bridge principle and the thermometric property here is resistance okay then thermocouple another type of temperature measuring device thermocouple it is based on a seaback effect what is that when two different metals are joined to form two different junctions and if these junctions are maintained at two different temperatures then an emf electromotive force is generated which is directly proportional to the temperature difference see we have two metal junctions and if there are two metals and if these two metals are joined together to form two junctions okay and if these junctions are maintained at two different temperatures then an emf is generated emf is generated which is directly proportional to this temperature difference so if we have one known temperature then by the value of emf we can find out the difference of these two temperatures and then we can find out this temperature okay so this is the working principle of thermocouple okay the opposite of seebeck effect is peltier effect which is used in thermoelectric refrigeration in that what we do we make this same kind of arrangement having two metals joined to form two different junctions but in that case we apply this electromotive force okay in that we apply this electromotive force and in that these two different junctions comes at two different temperatures one is a hotter temperature and one is a relatively colder temperature okay so in that case it is used for thermoelectric refrigeration that is Peltier effect okay then another one is constant volume thermometer what is it see we have seen okay or we will see in further uh, lectures that this is the equation of an ideal gas PV is equal to MRT where this is pressure this is volume this is mass this is characteristic gas constant and this is temperature see if we have a constant volume that means v is constant so p is directly proportional to t because m and r are already constant okay so here pressure plays the role of thermometric property okay and in constant pressure thermometer same thing pressure p will be constant so v is directly proportional to t or volume v plays the role of thermometric property so this this is important to note that in constant volume thermometer pressure plays the role of thermometric property and in case of constant pressure thermometer volume plays the role of thermometric property okay important point to note is material of construction in both the constant volume and constant pressure thermometers is same that is ideal gas that is why we have used here the ideal gas equation okay 
Then we have temperature scales. See, before 1954, temperature measurement was based on two reference points, namely the ice point and the steam point. That is, okay, that is basically for water, 0 degree Celsius and 100 degree Celsius. But after 1954, temperature measurement is based on single reference point, namely triple point of water. Okay, triple point of water. What is that? 273.16 Kelvin or 0 0.01 degree centigrade. Okay, and what is a Kelvin scale? We have different kinds of temperature scale, Kelvin scale, Fahrenheit scale, degree celsius scale Rankine scale what are those kelvin scale it is a absolute and thermodynamic scale what is a thermodynamic scale absolute scale though you might all understand what is an absolute scale that in that scale only positive values are there no negative values what is a thermodynamic scale a thermodynamic scale is one which does not depend upon the thermometric property of the system Okay. And according to an internationally accepted convention, 1 Kelvin is equal to 1 by 273.16 of triple point of water. This is the value of triple point of water in Kelvin. Okay, And 1 Kelvin is equal to 1 by 273.16 time of triple point of water. Okay, And then see how this value came. Okay, How this value came. See. For different substances, A, B, C, different substances, if you draw a curve between the pressure and the temperature in degree Celsius, okay, so all these lines are straight lines and they all coincide at a point in a temperature which is minus 273.15 degree Celsius and that is 0 Kelvin. This point is taken as 0 Kelvin. So this is the minimum possible temperature which can be reached beyond this temperature you cannot go because the pressure in that case will fall to negative that means a vacuum pressure okay and vacuum pressure cannot exist okay so for pressure to be zero for pressure to be absolute zero or basically it can't be vacuum it will be a negative pressure it will be a negative pressure because this absolute pressure we are talking about and absolute pressure can can't be negative okay absolute pressure can't be negative so this is the value we arrive at at which the absolute pressure becomes zero so this is the minimum possible temperature that can be reached however no one has reached at this point till now this is just a theoretical value and many have reached closer to it but not exactly this point has been reached till now okay many researchers are going in this field but nobody has reached exactly this point till now okay so this is about kelvin scale then we have what is the Rankine scale it is also an absolute and thermodynamic scale like kelvin scale okay then inter interconversion between various temperature scales see if one temperature if the temperature is given in one unit how you can convert it in another unit temperature in kelvin is equal to temperature in degree celsius plus 273.15 it can be written as 273 also but this is the exact value okay then temperature in degree celsius is equal to 5 by 9 temperature in fahrenheit minus 32 okay temperature in Fahrenheit minus 32. In the Fahrenheit scale, the boiling point of water is 212 Fahrenheit and the freezing point of water is 32 Fahrenheit. Okay, so from that this relation has been derived. Okay, and temperature in Rankine, in degree Rankine, in Rankine scale is equal to temperature in degree Fahrenheit plus 459.67 again you can take this at 460 also but 459.69 is the exact value okay then this is the interconversion of temperatures from one scale to another scale then what is we have calibration of thermometers see if suppose two thermometers one using alcohol and another mercury okay don't think anything wrong about alcohol it's a uh, just a chemical like any other chemical okay if suppose two thermometers one using alcohol and other mercury you can take here any other chemical if you want okay 
and mercury are calibrated at two points then they are guaranteed to read same at the calibration points but everywhere else they are not guaranteed to read same okay when we have calibrated those two thermometers at two temperatures so they are guaranteed to read same at those two points and everywhere else they are not guaranteed to read same okay so this is all about zeroth law of thermodynamics and thermometry in the next lecture we will come up with first law of thermodynamics and something related to the concept of work and heat okay so thank you all for watching this video have a good day